And good morning and welcome back to the one Celtic fans view this morning where you get your daily dose of Celtic news first thing in the morning and um, we've been doing it for a good few years now. When you look at the summer transfer, there's big news coming out of Celtic at the moment um, with regards to this summer, but when you look at last summer and there was a player come in, Gustav Lagerbelke, him and Kyogo have taken to Instagram. Um, Kyogo this morning has taken to social media to send it a warning, send it a warning to not only Celtic but the rest of the SPFL. Gustav Lagerbelke has sent a, a, a message also. And a lot of fans feel for Gustav because he's a player that has came into Celtic and he didn't do too much wrong at the start of the season. He was thrown in at the deep end. He was thrown in at the deep end. We had some clean sheets and the only thing that he did wrong was get sent off in a Champions League game. And a lot of Celtic fans think that there must have been some kind of falling out. But as a professional player, he gets on with it. He was then told he wasn't good enough for Celtic by the manager and he was told to find a new club, which his agent did. And then when he was on his way to the airport and ready to leave Celtic, Celtic had another 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 injury crisis and they, and they stopped him leaving. They stopped him leaving and they kept him. And they've kept him in cold storage. He'd managed to get some game time at the weekend after being brought on when we went on goal down. But he's taken to Instagram. Talk about him first and then Kyogo. The big news from Kyogo this morning. The warning from Kyogo. Gustav Lauer Belke took to Instagram and he said, plus three points. We keep going. Support great as always. And then he's taking a picture of him looking a bit stony-faced, walking into Celtic Park off the bus. And first up was Lewis Palmer with love eyes. And then Matt O'Reilly. Matt O'Reilly sends out love to him also. I mean, they must know what he's feeling as a player, but he just gets on with it. You just get on with it. So we'll see what transpires with him in the summer. Now to the big one, the big warning from Kyogo. Kyogo Furiashi, a lot of people have been saying that, you know, he's not hit the form that he's hit last year. And um, he's, he's not been as good. He's not been getting the service. He's been replaced by Adam Ida, who came into Celtic. And is Adam Ida the, the long-term, is he a long-term vision for Celtic? Is that the way that we want to go? I mean, he's come in, he's had a good account of himself, but it depends on the finances and it depends on the money. If, he, if it's a... If, if they're wanting crazy money for them, they can go and sling their hook. But Kyogo has taken to Twitter this morning, or X as it's now called, and he said, I'm not afraid of failure. I will continue to challenge and aim for the top with three four-leaf clovers. And then some pictures of him from the weekend. Obviously the one I'm scoring the goal and um, the one with him and an embrace with the one and only Nico Kuhn, who set him up for that fantastic goal. You've got to say, Kyogo as a player, he's not afraid of failure. And, and you know, a lot of people give him a stick and I think Kyogo is going to come into his own at the end, this end of the season. I think he's going to come into his own and he's going to prove to us all that the, the Kyogo of old is still there. The Kyogo for the the goal scoring machines. When you look at it at the weekend, I mean, he had two given offside and he hits the bar. I mean, I did say the night before and, and before the game, I said, I'm going to take Kyogo for a double at the weekend. Got a funny feeling he's going to score two goals. He, scored, he could have scored a hat-trick. He could have scored, he could have scored four. Um, if that one that hits the post, I mean, you're thinking, how lucky was that one? The two offsides, okay, it was margins of error, you could say. I mean, one of his arm was offside. Um, but we're not going to moan about that because VAR is there for a reason, whether VAR is good enough in Scotland and the fact that it takes VAR about... I mean, I watched the first half of the Atletico Barcelona game last night and it finished bang on the 45 minute mark. There was no VAR. There was no VAR looking at anything that went on in the game. I mean, it was fantastic football to watch. Um, when the goal was given, there was no VAR looking at it. And in, in Scotland, every single game that Celtic have, every single goal is looked at by VAR. And it takes around about half a minute. You know, every, every decision takes about half a minute to a minute, which gets added onto the game. That Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona game last night finished bang on half time on the 45 minutes. No VAR at all. No VAR was needed. So it says all it does about Scottish football. So anyway, about Celtic and the news that they put out yesterday, the little teaser that they put out yesterday. So yes, at this moment, everyone is sitting glued to their social media, waiting on Celtic, putting out a statement. Eight o'clock has come and gone. 
and this Monday morning, and Celtic still haven't put anything out. They're probably going to wait till nine o'clock now, and that's the way that they do it. It's either eight o'clock or nine o'clock that they will put out a statement when it comes to what's going on with the summer and the tour of America and Ireland. When you look at it, the international break is this week, so it is all about controlling the media, and the likes of Kyogo Furuyashi hasn't went away with his national team. So they will play a, a, a closed-door game at Celtic uh, in the next week, just to make sure that some players are getting up to match fitness. Ones like Rio Hatate, Rio Hatate, who hasn't played for a good part of the season for Celtic. I mean, you could probably count on one hand the amount of games that Rio has actually played for Celtic this season when he's not been injured. The fact that he did get injured the last time he was away with the Asia Cup, um, and thankfully he's not away this time because he's been injured since he came back with that double calf. And there's still no word on, on Callum McGregor, and it's all a bit secretive about what's going on with Callum McGregor. The, 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 rumor, the rumors are going around that Callum's out for the season. Celtic are going down the line that he'll be back after the international break. Well, we'll see what happens because really, um, if Callum's out for the season, it looks like Callum would then miss the Euros. And that would be absolutely devastating for Callum McGregor because he's a player that it needs to be performing at the highest level and it, it deserves to be playing at the highest level. And when you look at him in that midfield for Scotland, um, he's a player that would be absolutely buzzing. And let's just hope that Callum isn't out for the rest of the season for Celtic's own um, reasons because we play so much better when he's in that midfield. Anyway, come on, Celtic, what are you doing? We're waiting on this news about the American tour and the Ireland tour. Now, it is quarter past eight as I'm recording this. Uh, Celtic part time Celtic still haven't put out any kind of statement yet. I thought they might have put it out at eight o'clock. It's looking more like roughly about nine o'clock that they will put it out. Stephen Welsh has been talking in the media. He's been talking um, and he says that he wants to add to his medal collection the academy player. Um, who's been through all with Celtic over the years and he's, he knows what it takes to win. And I did shout at the weekend saying that Stephen Welsh would start. And people said to me, so what, start Welsh? Are you crazy? You have to think about it from the manager's point of view. He's a player that the manager likes and trusts. He knows, likes and trusts the player. That's why Stephen Welsh got the nod at the weekend. And that's why, you know, when a manager has that trust in a player to perform for him, he, he will pick him before the likes of Gustav lager Belke. Stephen Welsh has been saying that Celtic need to stick together and, and need to focus and have a good running. We only know with eight games to go, it is, it is the money, the money shot end of the season. And Stephen Welsh says that we have to we have a great squad of players. He said, he says it's a good environment every day. We just keep on pushing each other the best to be the best players we can. Yes, one big push is what's needed now. Togetherness, one big push to get us over the line to win the league and the Scottish Cup. So I'll see you in the live in the next hour or so when Celtic have released the information about the up and coming tour, the up and coming tour to the good old Ireland, the good old motherland and the USOV. And on that note, have a fantastic morning. What do you think about Kyogo's little um, warning, warning that he's not afraid of failure and that's ominous, isn't it? It's ominous for the rest of the SPFL. Have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world.